Hey folks, following on closely from my last video where we talked about the 2080 Ti used from eBay and the £469 Founders Edition RTX 3070, today we're going to be taking a look at AMD's answer to both of these cards with its £529 RX 6800. Now I'll preface this video by saying that I know that getting a hold of any of these cards is a tall ask. But here in the UK, on the NVIDIA and AMD website, between my last video and this one, both the 6800 and the 3070 have been available at multiple points in their Founders or Reference Edition SKUs and at MSRP, which is sadly absolutely not the case when you look at the ridiculously marked up AIB cards. We're going to start this video right away by jumping into traditional rasterised games right out of the bat which have been running my overclocked Ryzen 7 3700X system, which is equipped with 32 gigs of DDR4 memory. All games are tested at my monitor's native resolution, which is 2560 by 1440 Kicking things off with Watch Dogs Legion, and it's pretty close going, all the cards here are much of a muchness. The RX 6800, it kind of ties with the 2080 Ti in 3070. Now it might go a few FPS in the AMD card's favour, but really when you're talking about a couple of frames per second here and there, I think we can call this one a tie. Which is pretty good going for the AMD card considering it's an Nvidia sponsored title. Moving on to another NVIDIA sponsored title with Cyberpunk 2077 on the Ultra preset with RT off. And here, pleasantly, the RX 6800 it starts to pull away from both the 2080 Ti and the 3070. Now there's only 5 or 6 FPS difference between these cards here, but it is notable, especially on this Ultra preset when you're kind of struggling to hit 60 FPS on average at the best of times. But again, it is a tangible win for the RX 6800. Now on to an AMD sponsored title with Godfall on the epic quality setting and ray tracing turned off. And here the RX 6800, it starts to stretch its legs a bit, pulling out ahead of both the 2080 Ti and the 3070 when it comes to average frame rate. The 1% lows were a bit more compact, there only been a 4 FPS difference between the 2080 Ti and the 6800, but when it comes to averages there is a considerable gap between the Nvidia cards and the AMD card. Jumping back in time a bit to a golden oldie, Shadow of the Tomb Raider on its highest quality preset, and all 3 cards here are performing really well. Now the RX 6800, it does take the win again here, returning 130 FPS on average, but even the 3070 with its 118 FPS average is no slouch. And all three cards return a really good gaming experience. Jumping into Horizon Zero Dawn on the Ultimate preset, it sees the RX 6800 breaking the 100 FPS barrier. Now the 3070 did get close with 96 FPS, but again there's about a 10% difference in performance between the Ampere card and the RX 6800. Moving on to Assassin's Creed Valhalla, the latest Assassin's Creed game from Ubisoft on the Ultra preset, and it sees the RX 6800 pull a really impressive 17 FPS lead ahead of both the 2080 Ti and 3070 when it comes to average frame rate and even the 1% lows were a good 10 FPS higher when using the AMD card. It's a really good strong showing for the Radeon brand. And things are kind of repeated, but to a lesser extent, when we jump back to the previous Assassin's Creed game, Odyssey. Now the RX 6800 here, it still takes the win. There's just not as much of a gap as we see with Assassin's Creed Valhalla. Still, it is a tangible increase, 77 FPS on average compared to 66 FPS of the 3070, and a 9 FPS difference in 1% lows. So if we take the results for all of these games and average them out, well, we see that the 2080 Ti and 3070 are unsurprisingly neck and neck. The average here was 77 FPS across all games tested, and the 1% lows came in at 59 FPS. The RX 6800 however returned an aggregate average of 88 FPS, with the 1% lows being 66 FPS. 
So looking at the aggregate results for rasterization, the 6800 not only wins out in every single test against the 3070, but seeing as the 3070 matches the 2080 Ti punch for punch, it's faster than the top end Turing car too. Averaged out, the 6800 pulls ahead of the RTX cards by about 14%. Coincidentally, it also costs 14% more than the RTX 3070's MSRP. So you are getting what you're paying for when it comes to pure gaming workloads. But let's change tack for a second and talk about what areas are a little less clear cut. Now, the RX 6800 series is AMD's first foray into the gorgeous hype train that is real-time ray tracing. And it's here that there's both good and bad news. Bad news in the sense that, until now, Nvidia was the only show in town, so pretty much all RT-enabled titles, bar a few, were developed specifically with Nvidia's RT cores in mind rather than AMD's integrated ray tracing accelerators. Now that's not to say that RDNA 2's RT performance is bad though, far from it. At the moment Godfall being an AMD sponsored title for example, and a launch game for the new AMD powered consoles, only has RT options on RDNA 2 cards. And it performs well while adding that nice RT gloss. And you've also got games like Dirt 5 which again really uses the RDNA architecture well and sees the RX 6800 compete with the 3080 and 3090 in rasterization. When turning on RT in Dirt 5, again it's hugely impressive, starting off with such a high frame rate, the hit from turning on RT is pretty negligible, whereas on the 3070 and even the 3080 from what I've seen online, it can be pretty hard to swallow. There are also some RT enabled games that the 6800 matches the 3070 or 2080 Ti, within a couple of percentage points at least. Games like Shadow of the Tomb Raider for example, yes the hit to frame rate is large like it is on the RTX cards, and no I don't think that the visual upgrade justifies that hit in FPS, but in the end all three cards perform pretty much on par with each other when it comes to ray tracing. And then there are games which are Nvidia sponsored like Watch Dogs and Metro Exodus. And performance in those titles, well it's not disappointing, but you just know that the card's capable of more. So to say it's a mixed bag at the moment is a bit of an understatement. It will be interesting though going forward, seeing as how both the PS5 and Xbox Series X are RDNA 2 based consoles. RDNA 2 will be the architecture that all games going forward are developed for first and foremost. There are other areas where AMD does fall short at the moment though. In particular, its answer to Nvidia's DLSS, as Fidelity FX Super Resolution is simply not available yet. Now DLSS is a point of contention for me, I love the idea of it, it's fantastic, take a lower res image, upscale it using AI, clean it up, and your result is an image which can look as good or better as native, but with frame rates much closer to that of the initial lower resolution. At the time of writing this though, I would still say that it just doesn't work well enough, in enough titles at least, to be any more than a little cool glimpse into the future. Despite my reservations though on the current limited state of DLSS, it can't be ignored that AMD's alternative is simply not available to the public yet, and if AMD really wants to compete on all fronts, it has to be a priority for them. So we've got rasterized performance, which is a definite win for the RX 6800. Ray tracing, which can be a bit of a mixed bag, but showing good potential when looking at the newer titles and considering how games will be developed going forward, and additional features which AMD needs to implement and are due to be released in the new year. As a package, I feel that it's certainly more fleshed out than Turin's launch was, and while I have focused on a few of the downsides to the card, the RX 6800 does have another few benefits compared to the 3070. The big one for me is VRAM, 16 gigs of GDDR6 compared to 8 gigs on the 3070 is nothing to be snuffed at. And we've seen it time and time again, by the end of the GPU generation, let alone the 7 year console cycle, which these cards will be relevant for, VRAM amount does matter. Usually I would add the suffix down the line to that last sentence, 
but even today we're starting to see games that are not only allocating 8 gigabytes of VRAM, but also using that 8 gigs or really close to it. And for a card that costs around 500 quid, I really don't think that having the same amount of video memory as the £230 RX 488GB which launched almost half a decade ago is really acceptable. There's also a few other features in the Radeon software suite that I personally genuinely miss when it comes to using an Nvidia card. The main one for me is Radeon Chill. Now for those of you who don't know what Chill is, in a nutshell it monitors the inputs from the player and adjusts the target frame rate to suit. Now Radeon Chill is a feature that I think we're going to have to delve into in a bit more detail in another video, but safe to say I use Radeon Chill far more than I've ever used DLSS or ray tracing capabilities on cards. It is just the perfect complement to a FreeSync monitor, and like I said, it is something that I genuinely miss when I jump over to using an Nvidia card. So let's wrap this up though. We've covered the good, the bad and the missing on both the RX 6800 and the RTX 3070. So what are my final thoughts on these two cards? Well, I'll just be blunt here. For 99% of the games out there, the superior rasterization performance on offer from the RX 6800 makes it simply the better gaming card. Pay a little bit more, you get a little bit more performance, it's got a bit more overclock and headroom than the 3070, and you get twice the VRAM, which, regardless of what anyone tells you, will matter down the line. The side tangent technologies like ray tracing and super resolution or DLSS will be really interesting to see how it develops down the line, but in the here and now, they are nothing more than a curiosity. So for this generation at least, I think we should still be focusing on rasterization performance, but with an eye firmly looking towards the horizon where ray tracing and super sampling technologies will indeed be very important. On balance though, for the here and now and for the foreseeable future, the RX 6800 to me, it seems like the better buy. Sure, it's a good bit less cut and dry than a lot of the other comparisons that I've run on the channel, but I guess you could really think of that as a really good thing for us consumers. We've got two really good options at the same price point. Neither of the cards are perfect. Personally, I've found myself keeping the 6800 in my main PC, with the 3070 now located in a secondary Xeon PC. And again, that's just due to the higher performance in games that I actually play on a day-to-day -day basis, and a feature set which, which at this current time, I find more useful. But hey, we've got two great options, and I'd love to know which one you would pick, and also which things you actually look for when you're buying a graphics card. Remember to let me know your thoughts, and I'll just say, stay safe, take care, and I'll see you all in the comment section down below, and in the next video.